Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, for those that still new here, I'd appreciate if you like this video to please subscribe, comment, share, and uh, yeah, maybe just a special thanks. Um, I think my previous video um, got quite a bit of uh, comments, um, more than any of my previous videos, and uh, I mean, the comments range from my opinion or questions um, as well as uh, thoughts um, on the 1200 GS so I think I maybe want to answer a few uh, questions by one of the other or one of my new subscribers um, that asked quite a few valuable points and um, if I'm not mistaken he is looking into either a 2016 F800 GS or a 2016 1200 um, which is exactly the same bike that I've got here and uh, I mean comparing the two the two different bikes the two different markets I would say um, two different price ranges as well I'm not sure about any other countries uh, or the pricing of other countries between the two bikes but definitely in South Africa uh, the difference in price between the bike the two bikes is you know more than double more than 50 percent uh, if I look into you know what I had a 2015 GSA versus 2016 GSA there was literally it was literally double the price getting on the bike uh, I was under my wrong opinion that there was only a small difference between the 800 and 1200 I did not expect such a massive difference in the type of riding um, the feel of the bike it, it, it's just two different bikes with two different markets initially when I bought the 800 it was obviously due to budget um, that I could at that point only afford the 800 and uh, I'm in a fortunate position where I could call it upgrade now a lot of people would say it's not an upgrade 800 is better off-road yeah it is better off-road but 99% you know, of my riding is either easy dirt or tarmac um, there's no point for me keeping the 800 um, seeing as I'm not really into the whole technical riding things I don't like dropping my bike and that type of riding you know it is uh, definitely definitely a big difference in um, what the two bikes are intended for so as a comparison a question was asked is would I ride the same type of dirt roads I did on the 800 and the answer is yes I would um, not right now I'm still only a few days into riding this bike getting to know it a little bit better but from the riding I've done I'll surely take it off uh, off-road the downside of it is obviously the bike's more expensive so I'm more reluctant to take it off-road because I really don't want to drop this bike but it is capable it's fully capable of doing it so I've got no mind or the type of roads I rode I'm, I'm sure I'll be able to do exactly the same on this bike so another comparison that uh, that was asked is in terms of running costs now this is I think subject to or each person's opinion but in theory the 1200 should be a little bit cheaper to maintain um, obviously it does not have a chain so you know if you take into account the time spent on doing chain maintenance every 500 to 1000 kilometers chain adjustments um, if you're riding a lot of off-road I mean especially we do trips they recommend that chains get clean every 500 kilometers and an average day trip out into the Cedarburg mountains for me is you know easy over 600 kilometers so you're really over you're going over that amount um, it's a lot easier to work on the bike although you've got the drive shaft that needs to be serviced and the needs to, oil needs to be changed and so forth I still think that should work out cheaper than changing chains or sprockets especially if you're doing quite a lot of gravel road and getting a lot of mud and gunk inside of the um, the chain I think the drive shaft should be less maintenance the other drop I had with the 800 um, one of the big reasons I wanted to upgrade to a 1200 is the fact that to do simple maintenance such as spark plugs you have to strip down 
the entire top of that bike just to get to the spark plugs on a 1200 with these big cost sticking out the side it's so much easier if i had to replace spark plugs um you know probably 20 10 20 minutes uh, job where on the 800 probably would have been a few hours the same goes for valve valve guides and so forth if you need to do any dead end work it's a lot more difficult to do it um, on the 800 even a simple thing as uh, the battery ran flat and you need to jump start it you need to remove the entire top cover just to get to the battery and this is on the 1200 it's little one wall screw and plastic cover and you're right by the battery so it makes it it makes the maintenance a lot easier now if something has a catastrophic had to happen on the 800 versus the 1200 i'm sure my opinion would change or any person's opinion would change about that but overall i think running cost wise if you're doing quite a lot of dirt roads and so forth i think the 1200 is a lot better on maintenance also taking into account it's double the price so for the type of riding that i do on the highway especially at the highest speeds so a problem i had with 800 is as soon as you reach 120 and it's always on the dot 120 there's quite a lot of vibration so uh, if you're planning a lot of off-road and slower say 100 kilometers an hour type trips the 800 is absolutely perfect it's an exceptionally good worth value for money um, as well as comfortable but when you start getting you know once you do a bit of touring the anything over 120 starts you know the, it, it's got quite a lot of vibration uh, quite a lot of wind buffeting so the 1200 in my opinion for the type of riding that i do long distance i would rather be on a 1200 the suspension is a lot better it's a lot more sophisticated i'm sure it's a lot more expensive when it does let go as well but i mean let's hope that it doesn't come to that the other difference between the two bikes um, is the additional extras you get especially when it comes to again the type of riding i do the touring is you know i do have the option of having cruise control the suspension i find i'm able to do a two hour stint on this bike without getting off without an issue um, comfort wise so it's, it's definitely a lot for me personally i think it's a lot uh, better value it's smoother ride it's a lot more enjoyable riding that i'd like to do obviously i think if we had to put the two head to head is 800 would obviously whip me around um, most dirt roads and technical riding stuff but in terms of uh, of highway and long distance riding i would i would take on an 800 any day of the week in terms of fuel usage um, i have not really seen that much of a difference in uh, fuel usage uh, between the two bikes maybe a 0.5 liter per 100 k's uh, more um, more on the 1200 but i'm also traveling at a uh, higher constant speed and in all honesty this bike's not built aerodynamic at all um, especially with the way I've got to kit it out now with the side panniers um, you definitely do start seeing quite a drop off in uh, fuel um, especially when you you know sit around 120 um, ish kilometers an hour so yeah there's that and then um, yeah there's a few other other nice luxuries that I enjoy um, I mean I'm, I'm coming again back to the suspension part thereof is absolutely no nosedive when I hit the front brake I mean I slack down now and I pull front brake there's almost no no front dive at all and it's it's just so much more convenient um, you know not having that dive in the front and I don't know you probably look a little bit like a like a bit of a chop when you brake so hard that you need to you know let the nose dives um, and then yeah things like the quick shifter now the quick shifter they they kind of make it seem like it's there for comfort but in my opinion it's only when you get a handful of throttle that i really find the quick shifter as as something that's nice the downshifting is very nicer 
Um, so the downshifting um, where it auto blips, this one is fitted with the Shift Assist Pro, I think. Uh, I think that's what they call it. So I've got on the downshift, I can. It just rev matches and it goes. Now, in terms of power, so that's obviously one of the questions was power wise, the bike airs on paper. I think the 800 does about 85 horsepower. This is 125 horsepower and 125 newton meters of torque. So, I mean, I'm currently cruising just under 100 k's an hour. I'm sitting at 4,000 RPM, and if I had to just open, you know, already at 120, and that was in fifth gear. So, it's definitely got that low down grunt um, that it's it, it, the power is definitely there. So obviously I have not gone faster than 120 ish. Um, so I don't know where it's not running out of steam. And to be honest, I don't intend on finding out anytime soon. I find the bike as it is or what it is. It's got enough power. Um, even riding pillion, I did the 300 kilometer round trip uh, yesterday. And with the pillion and the boxes on the back, and I still managed the fuel usage sitting at around 120 with a, well, around a 20 knot headwind. Um, I was still sitting between 6.1 liters per 100 kilometers to around 6.6, um, I saw at some stage. So it's definitely, the, the power really does help it um, in terms of, you know, being able to get up at a high speed and sit comfortably without having the feeling that the engine is working hard so i always had that with the 800 that it feels like the it's always up in the rev range uh, it feels like it's working hard um, you know when you start hovering around 5000 uh, 5, rpm um, and on the 800 that's 5000 rpm is 120 kilometers an hour on this bike um, let's check i'm sitting 120 i'm sitting 4,400 RPM so it's definitely a lot it, it doesn't feel like it needs to work that hard to sit at that optimal speed um, it's definitely very nice now there there are obviously things I don't like about the bike um, and one of the questions was the difference in weight now considering the 800 is only around 30 kilometers lighter than the 1200 surprisingly um, and it's got a bigger fuel tank so on the 800 i had the adventure model and i had a 24 liter fuel tank this is also adventure model on the 1200 and i've got uh, 30 liters so there's obviously a difference in um in weight quite a substantial uh, difference when you start you know adding fuel tank and additional um stuff that i put on but the, the difference is with the 800 with parallel twin, which is a great motor. I mean, that motor is actually built by Rotax, um, which I've got a lot of faith in um, for those that want to check it out. Go pull out the dipstick um, on the 800 and you'll see that the dipstick is actually branded Rotax. Um, so a lot of faith is an excellent, absolute excellent motor. But it being a parallel twin means it is upright so that puts the center of gravity a lot higher with this one is all the engine is down there where you hit your shins and that means that they can fill the tank a little bit more it doesn't when the wheel starts rolling it's not that difficult um i think for shorter people i think i'm about 1.8 meters ish um i can't i can flat foot it when i'm alone on the bike but when I've got a rider on and um, or when I have a pillion on it's a lot um, yeah it's a, it, get, it goes a lot higher um, in terms of suspension so I'll get into the suspension part there of now um, of what I have found on the suspension but yeah the 800 is also not a it's it's not a, a smaller bike so to speak you kind of sit uh, you get the feeling you sit on top of the bike especially with the fuel tank being in the rear you kind of feel like you sit on top of the bike kind of like you would feel like a scrambler or an off-road bike you kind of feel you get that same vibe from it um, with this you kind of feel like you sit inside of the bike so you feel a little bit more 
enclosed um, or protected from the elements, which is quite nice. Other things I don't like about it, this. It's super wobbly. Now, there are aftermarket fixes for this. I haven't really looked into it. I uh, don't know if it's gonna, it annoys me, at, it, it's annoying me at first, but I'm used to a very rigid uh, wind deflector in the front on the 800. So this is obviously a lot different because it is adjustable. I can move it down. Uh, it, it rattle or it, it moves a lot less when it is down. So I've got it on a tired setting now because I don't like the wind noise. But you still get wind noise, you still get buffeting, um, and you still get, at higher speed, it, it does rattle a bit. And that's me just really being picky, or nitpicking at, um, at fault. I'm sure it's like that for a reason, I'm not going to question it. Yeah, what other things I don't like about, um, about the bike? Oh yeah, the, the quick shifter, like I said earlier, I mentioned it earlier, that it's only when you really have throttle all the way gun that it's easy to do. I mean, it's quite difficult. I'm at a low RPM now and I have to give it quite a bit of force to actually see. So it would have been nice if it was a little bit easier to change it. I guess uh, they do it for a reason that you can't easily change gears that or when, at a time that you don't want to off-road when it's rough and shaky. So I guess that's what it's for. Would have been nice to have a setting um, um, about it as well. You know, or the setting for it, it would have just been a little bit nice to be able to, you know, if it was attached to like the riding mode, um, which this bike has five of, um, because I've got the little chip installed for it, so I've got the Enduro Pro modes and so forth. But it would have been nice if it actually links it. If you're Enduro, it's difficult, more difficult to shift. If you're in road, make it a little bit easier um, to shift. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's something nice. Oh yes, one nice thing I did notice with it is I did give it a little bit of a of a brisk pull away the other day, and um, obviously the bike's got a traction control system built into it, and um, the front wheel surprisingly comes up very quickly. But what I found with the 800 that had traction control, as soon as the front wheel starts lifting, it it just cuts all, like all the it feels like it cuts all of the power um, on the 1200 it doesn't feel like that it kind of gently puts the front wheel back down and when it wants to come up again when you select second gear you know doing a bit of a power wheelie um, obviously by accident it does put it down quite easily um, the front wheel back into the ground quite easily and it's not a rough it's, it doesn't feel like it's cutting power but you know it is cutting power, so it, it's a very whoa, that was close. Uh, it's a very weird setup, um, very pleasant setup. I like it. Uh, another comment, uh, a lot of the comments that I saw as well um, was, you know, is it better? Is it really better than the twelve? The twelve fifty really that much better? Look, I mean, at the end of the day, you they stopped making the twelve hundred in twenty eighteen, so. They, again, there's two different bikes. The 1250 is a next generation bike. Um, obviously, it's it shares the same pedigree. The 40 odd years of the or 40 plus years of development on the GS, um, but it's again, it's a it's a different bike. It's a next generation bike. If I again, if you, it's all up to the budget at the end of the day and what you want to do with it, but. I haven't been able to ride a 1250, but I can pretty sure it is probably a little bit better. Um, I mean, you do have the TFT display. Now, a lot of people are in two minds about the TFT display, but I think it's quite nice. Um, I would like a TFT display. It is a tad more powerful, from what I understand. Um, probably a lot more efficient, a little bit more efficient. And... Um, yeah, I mean, it's a different bike and it's down to your budget at the end of the day. If I think if I was in a position to buy a brand new bike, you can't get 1200 brand new anymore. Um, you know, I had to buy used, but if you wanted a brand new adventure bike, um, 1250 would probably be the way to go. So I've got nothing against those bikes. I'm sure they are absolutely wonderful. I'd like to, you know, one day ride one or even own one at some point. 
I just think there's a different transition that people are very biased towards the 1200s because they are fantastic bikes. They're just very biased. And I am very sure that that was the same argument that was made when the GS changed from air-cooled to liquid-cooled around, what, 2014, I think. Um, so I'm sure a lot of people, I actually heard someone the other day say, I'd rather stick with an air-cooled 1200 than the liquid-cooled. Now, sure, I mean, whatever works for you, but I don't think it justifies stating that the air-cooled was a better bike. It might have been a lot, a lot less electronics. It might have been a lot easier to fix uh, but people built their trust in it and the same way people built their trust in the 1200 liquid cooled and people must still build their trust in the new 1250 um, i think what puts people off is electronics um, obviously there's a lot more electronics on that bike and it's got the fancy cams and valves that yeah you know, i'm sure people see it, see it as a as a weak point or piece that can go wrong an expensive part that can go wrong but I mean that's the trend you can't make the same bike for you know five six seven years um, you know you'll just get left behind um, the trend must always be up so yeah I mean for, from our perspective is whatever is gonna work for you if you feel that the 1200 is a better bike and that's the bike you're gonna benefit for get the 1200 um, get a used 1200 you can pick them up for really good prices uh, now that 1250 has been you know doing the round since what 2018 2019-ish I think that's when the 1250 st uh, started um, being released so but if you need a brand new one and if you prefer brand new bikes and you've got the budget for it why not get a 1250 um, I mean all these things that's gonna break on the bike or that people are worried about as failures you still have the benefit of a factory warranty you know which i don't um anymore Now, the other thing you need to take into account, and again, it comes down to your personal circumstances, but I mean, I use the bike quite a lot in traffic, um, you know, commuting to and from work, and um, it's the sheer size. So, if size is really a problem and putting you off of a 1200, or, or you know, this is quite a big uh, 1200 uh, GSA, the Adventure, it, it's not the best for traffic, especially with me that's got the aluminium panniers on the back um, it's 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 rather wide um, even without them the front is relatively on the large size but I mean the normal 1200 or the standard 1200 is a lot skinnier now I compared my 800 adventure size wise to the normal standard 1200 and it is not far off to be honest um, in terms of the width of the bike um, the way it looks you kind of have to make it you know you kind of have to look for the engine um, you know to convince you what bike it is so the 800 uh, even the standard 800 is even smaller than that and uh, but again I mean the smaller you go in my opinion the the less comfortable it is on higher speed the 800 you're also sitting with which I love which I love for hate relationship but the front wheel on the 800 um, it's got a big 21 inch front wheel absolutely fantastic off-road like brilliant off-road but you always got the feeling through if you're driving through a mountain pass at, you know on tar you 
the first time I rode that bike and I took it through a mountain pass and you know started leaning the bike over and I always got the feeling because of the front wheel most probably but it always felt like the the front was giving way um, and it probably wasn't but it definitely gave that um, that that feel to it even when you start getting a little bit up in the in the speed range you get quite a bit of um, of wobble on the on the front so now I think my rim might have been it was slightly uh, a few smileys or a few dings in it from eating some big rocks off-road and it could have been that um, but it at higher speeds it does not feel stable with the 800 steering damper everything it's absolutely glorious um, I absolutely love that part thereof and uh, yeah I mean that's just comparing the two bikes and um, I think I threw a bit of the 850 in there as well you know the 850 argument is in my opinion not valid it's two different bikes um, the question should really be is you know do I want to 800 1200 or do I want to 850 or do I want the 1250 um, and um, all of them are fantastic bikes in my opinion um, my 800 I was very comfortable on because I was you know I put quite a lot of kilometers on it on in a very short time uh, well, not a short time but I mean it's about two years I had the bike for a little over two years so I was kind of one on the bike with the bike um, I was bonded to the bike so to speak so it's still a fantastic bike but I've left to keep it I just couldn't justify keeping two bikes and if I was in a position to do it I would have uh, because it is it's for entirely a different purpose of riding but yeah now back to the 800 one thing I wanted to mention um, was the suspension and um, I don't know the suspension is it just is just able to predict the road conditions and adapt so quick um, I've never, I've ridden bikes for quite some time, I've ridden, you know, I come from more sport bikes, but the 800 was really my first, uh, my first adventure type bike, and um, yeah, I mean, that, that bike sold me on a 1200, you know, that's it. For new riders, uh, I would not recommend the 1200. I would say start on something like an 800. Go full with the 800 if you're going to do off-road. Learn those lessons before you jump on a 1200. This bike is extremely intimidating, um, especially if you first get on it. You know, coming from an 800 uh, GSA, which is not a small bike either. Jumping on this, it's it's absolute. It's a monster. Or it looks like a monster, but it's actually so tame. Like I mean, I'm sitting 80 k's an hour now. One hand off the, you know, off, and I can quite easily just go. And uh, you know, the power is there, but it's it's manageable. However, the size, the intimidation factor of the bike is is quite quite big. Lane splitting is not that great, but the rest of it is it's the same but better. Um, I think that's the best comparison I can do between the 800 and the 1200. Um, same bike, just more bike, more power, and possibly more repair balls. I mean, <laughs> let's hope that's not the fact. But yeah, anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I'm gonna call this video quits now. And um, yeah, I mean, if you've got any questions, any more input, uh, what do you wanna see on the 1200? If you're thinking of buying one, but not completely sold on it, um, there's things bothering you, I mean, give me a, drop me a comment. Um, and I'll gladly look into it. I try. I do go through all my comments at this stage because my channel is small. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys want to see, um, what you want to know to convince you which bike is the best for you. Um, seeing as I've got experience in both. 
um, I mean, shoot me and uh, yeah, I'll see if I can make uh, videos for you to convince you if it's the right bike or not. Um, but yeah, anyway, see you guys in the next one and then uh, yeah, looking forward to making more videos. Anyway, cheers guys, bye.